As we gather for worship, let us listen for the voice of our Good Shepherd who calls us by name, provides all that we need, binds up our wounds, searches for us when we are lost, comforts us in our losses, protects us when we are frightened and helpless, walks with us through the valleys of shadows and uncertainty. Our Good Shepherd is not a hireling. Our Good Shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. Our Good Shepherd loves us with an everlasting love. words of scripture from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians, chapter number one, verses three through seven. Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all consolation, who consoles us in all our affliction, so that we may be able to console those who are in any affliction with the consolation with which we ourselves are consoled by God. For just as the sufferings of Christ are abundant for us, so also our consolation is abundant through Christ. If we are being afflicted, it is for your consolation and salvation. If we are being consoled, it is for your consolation, which you experience when you patiently endure the same sufferings that we are also suffering. Our hope for you is unshaken, for we know that as you share in our sufferings, so also you share in our consolation. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks Thanks be to God. Let us join our hearts and voices together as we pray. God, God, our our Heavenly Heavenly Father, Father, you you are our ever-present help in times of trouble. trouble. You You are are attentive attentive to the cries of your children. Compassionate is your heart. Gentle is your touch. 
This morning, we are worshiping you in our homes. We feel distant from one another, for we have not been together in a long time. And we know that troubles and sorrows have overtaken some of our friends, for that is life. As Jesus intercedes for us in your presence, O God, may our friends who are lonely experience your abiding presence and steadfast love. May our friends who are sorrow-filled feel your tender and comforting embrace. May our friends who are sick sense your healing touch and power. May our friends wrestling with dark moods lift up their heads to glimpse the light of your hope and peace. May our friends who are afraid know that you are their guardian and protector. May our friends who are struggling with decisions receive the gifts of your wisdom and guidance. God, our Heavenly Father, remind us all today that there is absolutely nothing we may face or experience in this life that has any power to separate us from your love revealed in Jesus the Son. Assure us that at all times and in every circumstance, you are our God, who is for us. Jesus is our Christ, who is with us. The Holy Spirit is our Comforter, who is within us. Amen. words from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians, chapter 4, verses 7 through 10. But we have this treasure in clay jars, so that it may be made clear that this extraordinary power belongs to God and does not come from us. We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed, perplexed, but not driven to despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed, always carrying in the body the death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may also be made visible in our bodies. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.
My grandfather was diagnosed with lung cancer in November of 1980 when he was 83 years old. He fought a valiant fight. He lost. In August of 1981, I spent five days with him at Spartanburg General Hospital. I came home from New York to be with him because his doctors did not expect him to survive that week. One day when we were alone, he offered me these words of wisdom. Son, he said, you have a hard time getting into this world. You have a hard time making it in this world. And sometimes you have a hard time getting out of this world. Hard times are hard. He lingered until December of that year. I've never forgotten those words of wisdom. Hard times are hard. And across the years, I've learned a few things about hard times. No one escapes hard times. They come as part of the package of what we call life. Hard times befall us for all kinds of reasons, and sometimes for no reason at all. Sometimes we contribute to our hard times. At other times, we are collateral damage or unintended consequences to another person's contribution to their hard times. Hard times fall upon good people and not so good people. Hard times come to people with lots of money and connections and to people with little money and few connections. Hard times derail the lives of the healthy and the vulnerable. Hard times come to the faithful people, and they come to people who have no faith at all. Sometimes hard times come, and there is something or someone to blame. And sometimes there is nothing and no one to blame. Hard times come and go. Hard times come and stay. Hard times are reality of life. People of faith are not immune to hard times. They come into our lives with the same frequency and intensity as anyone's. God does not keep us from hard times. People of faith are at risk in the world just like anyone else. People of faith are surprised and blindsided by hard times too. I think that is what Paul is attempting to say to those Christians in Corinth so long ago. He does not deny hard times, afflictions, and sufferings. He does not explain why people face hard times. He does not attempt to blame anyone for hard times. Apparently, Paul sees hard times, afflictions, and sufferings as part of the web of life, and he has a unique perspective on hard times. Paul believes that hard times, afflictions, and sufferings come so that we may experience God. We experience God with us as the Father of all mercies and comfort and consolation. We experience the sustaining grace of God that is sufficient to help us meet the hard times of any given moment. Hard times are not an indication that God has abandoned us. Quite the contrary. In the midst of hard times, we experience the mercy and grace of God. Our experience of God's mercy, grace, and comfort during our hard times enables us to turn and help others who are experiencing their hard times, their afflictions, and their sufferings. We are able to share what we learned about God, about ourselves, and about life by living through the hard times. In fact, it sounds as if the Apostle Paul was a willing student of the school of hard times. For those experiences prepared him to turn to encourage, to comfort, and to strengthen others. Paul is confident that just as others share in hard times, they will also experience the mercy and comfort of God that he experienced, that sustained him until the hard times passed 
or they were lived through. Paul is not attempting to use inspiring religious language to cover up the reality that hard times are hard. He is speaking from his own actual experience. If you were to continue reading on from the point where Tim finished, you will find Paul acknowledging that he faced incredibly hard times in Asia. He was so utterly, unbearably crushed that he despaired of life itself. In those hard times, he found himself tempted to throw in the towel. In those hard times, he thought maybe, just maybe, his only escape would be death. In the midst of those hard times, Paul learned not to rely on himself, but on the God who raises the dead. God provided sustaining grace in times of trouble. God provided strength to endure those times. God provided inspiration to see beyond the hard times. God provided creativity to live successfully through the hard times. Paul walks through hard times confident that God will be with him and he will endure. Paul did not allow himself to become fixated on how bad or how unfair hard times were, but he places his trust in God, who shares our human sufferings through Jesus the Christ. Paul does not describe in detail how God helped him through hard times. But God apparently did not wave a magic wand and make the hard times disappear. Paul writes in the fourth chapter of his letter to the Corinthians these words. We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed. We are perplexed, but not driven to despair. We are persecuted, but not forsaken. We are struck down, but we are not knocked. Or destroy. God will provide all that we need when facing hard times, but we may bear the scars of those hard times. God does not wipe away the memory of those hard times. We have stories of suffering and survival to share. The stories we share become the gifts of hard times because they bestow upon us stories of God's redeeming power. When hard times are hard, we experience God's mercy and comfort. When hard times are hard, we learn to abandon our trust and our own abilities and in ourselves and to rely upon God to accomplish what we do not have eyes to see, nor imagination to imagine. We, when we, what we learn through our experiences with God when hard times are hard, enable and empower us to turn and to comfort and to encourage others with the very same comfort and consolation, encouragement and inspiration that came to us when our hard times were hard. We share our stories of healing, of redemption, of salvation, of restoration, of recovering the joy of living. I want to impress upon you this morning that there is no escaping hard times. Hard times are hard. And what we learn about God in living through hard times must not be hidden away as our very private and personal story. We must share with one another what we have learned. We must be witnesses to the presence and power of God that we experienced in hard times. Perhaps we must be honest enough to confess like Paul how we came so very close to throwing in the towel. How often we despaired of life itself. And then, then we tell 
what we experience after we let go and let God lead us through the hard times. I am convinced that we would be hard pressed to find a human problem, trouble, affliction, or suffering common to humanity that is not present among us, the church of God called Emmanuel. Those of us who have gotten through hard times to the other side or who've learned to live in the shadow of hard times, we have stories of God's mercy, comfort, and presence to share. We don't attempt to tell anyone facing hard times that we know how they feel or what they are thinking for it is humanly impossible to know what another person is feeling and thinking. What we do know, with great intimacy, remembered with greater clarity, is what we experience during our hard times. The thoughts that filled our minds, the fears that stalked us, the hopelessness that descended upon us, the hurt and anguish we felt, the hard questions we asked, the trials of faith we faced. We don't stop with a vivid description of our hard times, but we go on to share our story of rescue, of healing, of recovery, of forgiveness, of salvation, of redemption, of wholeness, and of restoration. We share our experiences of God's strength and our weakness, of God's presence when we felt terribly alone, of God's comfort when we were inconsolable, of God's mercy and grace when we could not stop blaming ourselves for the hard times we were facing. For God was with us. God did not forsake us even when the hard times were their hardest. When hard times were hard, we learned that absolutely nothing could separate us from the love of God we experienced in Jesus the Christ. Perhaps you're wondering why I have offered you this sermon on this particular Sunday. The answer is rather simple. We are all, every one of us, enduring the same hard time, the coronavirus pandemic. None of us have been here before. There are no maps to guide us, no how-to books to turn to. These hard times are really hard because we're facing hard realities that we have never encountered before in our lives. Families are celebrating births and birthdays, graduations and anniversaries in ways never attempted before, struggling to have meaningful celebrations without the gatherings and the traditions that shaped and defined those events of life in the past. People have gone into the hospital, some of them facing critical health events to be left alone, for no one could come and visit them. Families have lost loved ones that they could not be with in those very final moments of life. People have faced death alone because friends and families have not been able to join them in their grief. Never before in my lifetime at least and I suspect yours too, have individuals and families had to face so many of life's hard times alone, without a community, without others to come and help them carry the load. My questions are these. What have we learned during this hard time? What made strange celebrations meaningful? How did we stumble through those days when we were alone in the hospital? How are we limping along 
since we last stood alone at that graveside. For the first time, for many of us, we have had to trust our own encounters with God in the midst of hard times. No one was there, no one could come to us to assure us of God's presence. There was no face to look into and see the face of God. Yet I am confident that God in Jesus Christ has met us in these hard times. We were comforted, we were strengthened, we did find hope. And now, though maybe we don't yet know it, we have stories to tell. Experiences with God to share with others who are only today faced with the hard times we just stepped through. And so, we must grab a pen to write a note. We must pick up a phone to make a call. We must turn on the computer to send an email to reach out to someone going through the very hard times that are still so fresh in our own memories. We must share with them how God was with us and how God led us through these hard times, our hard times, with his sustaining grace, his mercy, his comfort, to the place where we are confident now that we can live again. We can embrace life with hope and joy. We have arrived at a place where we are no longer bitter about what was denied us. We've arrived at a place where we have a story to tell of God's amazing grace that came to be with us when hard times were hard. You see, I believe in the midst of your hard times and mine, God has inspired a story to be shared. And somewhere, perhaps at this very moment, there is someone waiting to hear our story so they may emerge from their hard times afflicted but not crushed, perplexed but not driven to despair, persecuted but not forsaken, struck down but not knocked out. For they hear a story shared by someone who found God to be a faithful friend in hard times. Yes, hard times are hard, but God is with us. And what we've experienced of God in hard times, we now have a wonderful gift to share with others. Today is Father's Day, and I encourage you to remember days and to remember your father with a special gift, words of appreciation, some act of kindness. For those of us whose fathers no longer share this life with us, let us choose to remember today what was the very best about them. If your father lives away from you in another city or town or state or even country, call him today before evening comes so he won't think that he was the last person you thought of today. And if, because memories have waned, you are afraid your father may not even know who you are today, be hopeful that somewhere deep down inside his being, he knows that you belong to him. On this Father's Day, let's recall all the good gifts we have received from fathers and give thanks to God. God bless you and have a good day. The way is long. Let us travel together. The way is hard. Let us help each other. The way is joyful. Let us celebrate together. 
The way is Christ, for Christ is the way. Let us follow him. The way is before us. Let us go with the peace of God, the love of Christ, and the sustaining presence of the Holy Spirit. Amen.